guest, Jenny Curtis. How are you doing, Jenny? Hello, Sean. I'm doing all right, uh, frazzled as always, yeah. as I'm sure you can tell. <laughs> yeah. Do we want to tell them what happened offline, that we got the times oh, mixed yeah. up? or? Yeah, there was a little time yeah. mix up, and I told her we could take an extra hour, but she was a, she was a good, and, and we're doing it. But um, where are you? Yeah, You're in L.A.? Leave. You're in... I'm in L.A., which is why I thought we were on L.A. time, because it's all about me. Right. No, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm in L.A. right now. I'm in my apartment in North Hollywood. You can see how much alcohol I have on my shelf. Hey, I have I alcohol that- on my shelf, too. I could, <laughs> I could go full screen in a minute. Um, and I have hard alcohol. You have wine. So, well, I don't know. It looks like some other oh, stuff. Oh, well, you can't see the top of the shelf. I yeah, <laughs> like, okay. All right, there you go. <laughs> All right, you beat me again. I was just telling Jenny that we kind of have the same podcast, but she has bigger guests. So that's what we're dealing with today. Uh, um, I think you had Kyle McLaughlin on there. You had the woman from Little Fires Everywhere. We're going to talk about that later. We're going to talk about uh, some films you were in. We're going to talk about uh, your podcast that you produce for podcasts and host to it's absolutely insane i thought i was busy and i do nothing compared to you so (laughs) i'm exhausted just talking about it but i'm going to do some ads right now it's going to take me a minute i'll go full screen so relax drink some water and i will be right back have fun with the ads hey everybody this is restream restream is a product that takes your live and sends it to several places just like i am right now uh, YouTube, Twitter, Twitch. It also has a live studio, which you can roll in clips and videos and make your own little Jimmy Kimmel internet show. Um, Restream is a very cool product, and there's a link in the live that you're watching right now if you want to check it out. Uh, also, we have, you can see a couple of logos on the screen here. We have Geek Vibes Network, which is a network that I'm part of. They um, have sports. Um, They have Marvel stuff. Uh, I'm totally blanking on what they have, but they are a network that has 50,000 Twitter followers and they do movie reviews and podcasts and uh, YouTube shows. Uh, It's a very cool network. So check that out. And lastly, Ecamm Live is an affiliate and that's the software that I'm using to go live with you right now. I'm going to come back to Jenny and you can also check out that link if you want to check out how we put the lower thirds and logos we're going to roll in some clips later it's very cool so jenny you have to talk for a little bit because i'm exhausted um (laughs) tell me about how you got started in the film and tv industry how you knew you wanted to be in this industry oh yeah that's a very long answer um so (laughs) how much (laughs) on a rest Uh, so I like to say that I knew when I was born because I have always been a performer and then I did this whole thing where I didn't let myself be an actor for 18, 20 years of my life. Like Mm -hmm. I did, I did, you know, the young stuff and the school plays and all of that, but I always wanted to go to acting school and, um, Didn't have the guts to apply straight out of high school, so I went to a a liberal arts school for a little while. And then I had a summer where I had an internship with an incredible woman named Patti Lapone, who is one of the biggest Broadway divas that exists out there. And I got to intern as her assistant for six marvelous weeks while they rehearsed, put up, and performed uh, Gypsy at the New York City Center. And Very cool. getting, yeah, that, it was awesome. And then getting to do that basically, uh, I guess, instilled in me that that was the only place I wanted to be because I would stand in the wings watching Patty, you know, leave it all on the stage. And um, at the end of that summer, I kind of told my parents, uh, you know, I, I kind of wish I could do this. And so my mother said, do you, are you going back to Pitzer, which is where I went to school at that point. Right. And I said, I didn't know that it was an option not to. And that was about it of, I, I stopped going to Pitzer. I, um, applied to a bunch of acting schools, ended up going to Cal arts, which I loved school. I loved every second of school. Um, started over because CalArts doesn't admit transfers to their acting program. So I really could have finished my BFA or my bachelor's degree and then gone for an MFA in the same amount of time it took me to get a BFA. But okay. here we are. <laughs> uh, 
then I graduated acting school and realized you can't step onto the streets and say I'm an actor and get hired. So I started working in production. And then for the past decade, I've been uh, freelancing in all sorts of things. I've worked in digital. I've worked in animation. I've worked in TV. Um, less so in TV, but, you know, the fun stuff. And... Um, Wow, I'm getting, this is a really long one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I'll, I'll interrupt you and I'll just ask you, like, I know you're doing a lot of things and we're going to go over all of it, but this just came to me so I could give you a break. Um, what would be ideal for you? Would you want to be um, running your own podcast company? Would you want to be a, a, a movie star, for lack of a better word? Or huh. would you want to be a showrunner that made a TV show or, or executive produced movies? What, what would be the ideal? Yeah. Um, this is the most cliche answer I could possibly say, but I want to do it all. Ah, okay. <laughs> okay. Um, I mean, no, it's acting possible. is my first love and I would love to be an actor. Uh, but that's not necessarily where my focus lies. So that's not really the path I'm on. But writing, directing, producing, I've fallen in love with all of it. So as long as I'm in a creative industry, I'm happy. Okay. So that's, and yeah. have, you made, have you made shorts yourself or written stuff yourself? I have written st <laughs> Let's talk about follow through for a second. I have written stuff. <laughs> I have shot stuff. Yeah. Stuff has not come out. <laughs> uh, okay. But... I've done a lot of like bouncing from small production to small production and helping people create their projects. Um, as an actor, uh, there was a while where I was in a bunch of shorts that I then became kind of a producer on. Okay. Um, and, you know, a lot of those you can't find anywhere, but they they're pretty neat. Um, I don't I don't know. I think I kind of just I look one step ahead of me and I take whatever step that is, but I'm, I'm not entirely sure what the game plan is in the long run, which right. is a bad answer. Right. No, I totally get it because I always had a side project and, and it's so crazy. I'm doing this podcast now. And this morning I was researching a true crime podcast. There's something wrong with us. Or you call us creatives, you call us uh, insane people or whatever we are, but we have to keep making stuff. And I've written a couple screenplays that haven't gotten produced. I've made some shorts. I've done some original plays. And um, as long as I'm creating something, whether it comes to fruition or not, I'm excited. I, I love mm -hmm. I love making stuff. And sometimes I just paint, you know. So sometimes I'll be walking around and be like, I just got to make something. I got to write something. I got to write a poem. I got to paint something. I got to do something because I can't just watch TV or, or sit outside yeah. and look at the sun. Um, well, it's funny that you say that I'm probably jumping way ahead yeah. of whatever you no, schedule, but, uh, to circle back to the podcasting, um, do I need to finish that story? So really quick, getting on board yeah. with podcasting, mm -hmm. uh, Kurt Co Media was a magazine comp company for 30 years and it was run by my father, uh, Bill Curtis. And, then he you know, sold his magazines and magazines aren't really the way of the future. So he was trying to figure out what's next and he came up with podcasting. And all of my life, you know, my siblings have worked for my father and I was kind of the kid who was going into the arts and I wasn't going to have anything to do with the right. family company. Right, right. Um, then he started a, essentially a podcast production company and I realized that I have something of value. So I started helping with production because that's something I know about. And before long it became a job rather than a advice. And the reason I had to finish that story because I'm neurotic, but I just wanted to make sure that was out there. When you're talking about being a creative person and having to create, um, a moment of your time is one of my podcasts. Right. And the reason I made that, it's, it's five minute segments of people submitting things they've created. And I made it because for me, I have to be able to make something in order to, we call it releasing the valve. Otherwise you get so pent up, like you don't right, know what to do. Right, so, you right, just, right. so you have to kind of like make something to get your energy out. And when quarantine started, I didn't know what to do. I had to make something, but I realized that because <clears throat> I assume other creatives and other people felt the same way, having an outlet for everyone was, was exciting to me. So it's, it's exciting to me to hear you say that you are like that, because to me, 
that's that's our people that's the community we're building and and it's i want to encourage anybody who wants to create to just create whether it's for something or not right it doesn't really matter if you reach the finish line it's just making stuff and like you said it it leads to other things and other pathways so this is re- I had this thought this morning and it was because I was kind of going through your bio and your IMDb and I was like, you know what? I think actors make really good podcasters and it's not because we can be fake or take on a character. It's because we don't have fear for you to go out in front of 300 people or or to do something, an interview on the street with a stranger. You have to be fearless, right? You have to. I mean, some people have stage fright backstage, but once they get on stage, they're mm-hmm. fine. But uh, like I've done stand-up comedy, which is insane and, and stupid, and I don't recommend it to anyone. Uh, but <laughs> although I like watching it. That's too scary. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but there's something about it that you have to be kind of fearless. And, and sometimes you're interviewing huge directors and sometimes you know, you're, you have to tell a story. And so you've got the improv thing going on in the theater. A lot of theater uh, work is improv ish in a way to kind of find um, your character in the script and stuff. So it, I, 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 do you feel that way? I mean, do you feel like because you were an actor that it helps you with your podcast, that it helps you Definitely. Uh, with I, your I interviews? Wouldn't, I wouldn't say it's fearless. And that's, um, for me, it's because I am an anxious person. I have, I would, I consider, I don't want to say I'm, I have a bunch of fear, but I, I would struggle to say I'm fearless. But okay. I will say for why it helps that I'm an actor is because, um, while some people might say differently, when you're an actor, it's not about you. It's about your partner or who you're connecting to or whatever. Right. So your energy is going outward rather than looking at yourself. And I think podcasting is just another means of connecting to people. And so yes. yeah. being an expert in connection, I think, is what helps me transition to podcasting. Okay, that's a, that's a different way. I like the way, that way <laughs> of looking at it. Yeah, because there's definitely a connection. You're only as good as your other actor, for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's interesting. Okay, so we're going to backtrack a little bit here. Uh, we're going to go back to your acting, if that's okay. We're going to show your yeah. demo reel. Oh, God. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know. Should we show the movie trailer first, then the demo? Because you're kind of giving it away, the, the any bullet will do scene. Oh, yeah, and... you'll see a good scene. It's up to you. Whatever you think. Okay. It's your show, I'm just my gonna, friend. I'm just going to wing it here and do your demo. So, so this is going to go full screen with audio. They won't hear us, and then we'll talk about it after you want to explain the different scenes and i definitely want to hear what it was like to be um, a guest actor in modern family that's very cool oh god yes this is jenny's acting demo i've been going up that pass and into them there mountains since i was six years young tricked and shot my first grizzly when i was 10 and packed it out of there all by my lonesome hell i could track a moose in my sleep even in the middle of a blizzard can you shoot <laughs> Does a dog bark? Okay. I'll pay you five hundred dollars. On account of I'm a woman. He's everywhere. He haunts me. They all do. They they feel like memories. And then they come back to haunt me like a curse. Why don't you tell me what happens in these dreams? And then I watch them die. All over again. Every day. Every night. Again. And again! We're closed. I will take one job interview, please. Excuse me? We're not really, um... Outside it says that you're hiring, and I'm for hire. That came out really wrong. Are you even old enough to have a job? Let alone drink? I turned 21 three days ago. This is a prank, right? Bill? It's not funny. Come take your powder puff Tinkerbell away so I can get back to work. Who's Bill? 
Oh, does he does he own this place? I should probably meet him too. Okay, yeah. This isn't gonna work. What about an alternative food source? If there was, we wouldn't be here. What about oddities? We call them scabs. They tend to stay closer to the coastline. I was wrong. You both know what to do. Yeah. Run. It was a meeting, but a romantic one. How professional. What? No, it was, it was a date. It was definitely a date. How unprofessional? What? No, it was, it was very professional. It was a meeting. A meeting date. <laughs> that redhead's no fun. Very cool. I have a million questions. Oh my god. <laughs> it's so I know it's so horrible when people like watch your demo and you're present. You're like I just want to send it to someone. I don't but you're a really good actress. You have this thing where you react, uh, there's some sort of I don't know how to explain it, but um, not a lot of actors do it. And they're, you're actually listening and you're reacting in, in the time. And it's sometimes you don't get help from the other actor, but you're still reacting. But what was the stuff with the war paint? What was that? That Was that still the a that bullet a movie short, or something else? Okay. No, oh, no, no, no. That was a short um, a one that we produced and it's edited and it never went out anywhere. So I think it's sitting in someone's hard drive Oh, <laughs> uh, and hopefully one day it'll see the light of day, but it was called who we are now. And we shot it in, I think Boron somewhere out in the desert in an abandoned neighborhood. Uh, it was about obviously like the apocalypse and there were cannibals and lots of running and yelling and fighting. It was lots of fun. <laughs> And you were just so, cast in it? You you didn't um, uh, write it I or was, direct it or anything? I did not write it or direct it, okay. but I was. it was kind of with a group of people that I had been working with, so it wasn't one of the projects. I didn't have to audition. It was just kind of a project we made, and then we went out and and did the thing, and then no one ever saw it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's start. We're going to go to any bullet in a second, but... Any bullet looks like, you know, high end cameras and like a real movie and a real budget. Can you say what the budget was or? Uh, I can't only because it changed so many times. I don't actually have the final number. It was one of those where it was supposed to start out really low budget. It was going to be super ultra low budget. And every step of the way, the budget increased and we kept finding more money and, um, by the end of it, I, I just I don't have the number of what was spent yeah, on it, but it was it was definitely less than it looks like. So I will say like it was it was a labor of love for a lot of people. And, you know, shooting we shot in Montana and that'll make anything look like a multimillion dollar movie. Right. It's just. Yeah. Yeah. Um, OK, I totally lost my train of thought there. But the other one postpartum, what, what was that about? postpartum was about uh, a bunch of girls in an insane asylum. I like to think of it as my girl interrupted moment because okay. growing up playing Lisa in girl interrupted was the dream who doesn't want to be Angelina Jolie. Yeah. So that was very much my Angelina Jolie moment where we went out and shot a short. I think it took us three days. We shot in an abandoned veterinary clinic i think mm. it was really creepy huge cast of women um a really fun project to do but yeah i got to be super crazy it's my favorite thing okay <laughs> really <laughs> you like the crazy parts okay like the crazy parts. <laughs> okay um and in modern family what was that like to guest on there in the jury that was one of the best half days of my life because they um it was my first time on a real TV set and they, uh, I mean, it was season six. So they really had their yeah. engines oiled, whatever the phrase is. Mm -hmm. But, uh, can I, I can't swear on this, right? I'm gonna... Uh, no. Uh, when we do the podcast, we can cuss like crazy, but during the day <laughs> on, on Facebook and YouTube, we yeah. cannot, and we can't use copyrighted music. Those are the only two rules. Everything else goes. Good to know. 
Well, they had their ish together, I'll say. (laughs) And it was just a well-oiled machine of super happy, super friendly people because they're on a massive hit show. Why wouldn't they be happy and friendly? But I I can't say enough good things about that. Everyone was so fun and so kind and so clear on what they wanted. And I got to sit there. And I mean, I had one line and... Uh, Jesse Tyler Ferguson, you know, walked in, shook my hand, greeted everybody surrounding me. It was just the, for, I think that was my first, I think that was my first professional role in film and TV. And it was just the best possible, best possible experience. Very cool. Um, I could have had, yeah. yeah. I didn't want to leave. <laughs> yeah, you wanted to come back tomorrow. Yeah, no, I, yeah. I interviewed the showrunner, Greg Schaefer, who did this Netflix show, Bruise Brothers, and he worked on The League, and um, he said that when he worked on that 70s show, it was, a, it was a well-oiled machine, happy sets, very similar, and everybody was very gracious, and they just nailed it, you know? And uh, this other director was talking about Luke Perry, how he always knew exactly where to go in the light and just mm-hmm. always be there. But the, the graciousness, um, this guy from TCM was talking about Sally Field and how they're like, OK, Sally, we're going to put you in makeup. And she was like, I got my makeup on. I'm ready. And she drove up in her Prius and had parked it herself and. You know, she was no nonsense. She wanted to sit with everybody and eat dinner. And then this, like, the star eats alone. Yeah, and be a stuff. part of the team. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's just so fun when you hear. And I think that's when people get really huge is when they're just open and gracious. Genuinely good. Yeah. yeah. Good people. Yeah. So yeah, that's I love fun. It. Okay. So uh want to talk about the podcast. We're just going to quickly go to this trailer. Is there anything you want to say about Any Bullet before we... We see you uh, shooting Uh, in the snow. It's a Western we shot in Montana. (laughs) It's in the snow. It was friggin' cold. Was it? (laughs) It was a day that it was negative five degrees and we were on top of a mountain. So it was an experience. But you had lots of furs on. You had like a fur hat or something. (laughs) Very different for a woman from LA. Yeah, very different. (laughs) Okay, um, it's just kind of fun. It's a good. It it it's like a real movie. So let's just watch it. This is the trailer for Any Bullet Will Do. Something tells me that most of what is told about you is truth. During the war, one brother fought to defend freedom, and the other, slavery. War and such does funny things to a man. Old shift to pan is slaughtered in the night, and the day's low to go. Stop. Man outside's got a mark. A mark they want. If it was ransom would brand on his men that served under his regiment during the war. I gave you five thousand dollars to kill them all. I need to hire someone to take me up over the bear tooth. Could be a day. A week. Can I promise a day return? Hunting a man is not the same as hunting an animal. I will not be the man to take you, Mister. I'll take you then. My hate for my brother. Your brother. Well. The rest of the boys, we got murdering to do. You need to get yourself home, Rose. It's too dangerous. Two will always be better than one. The shooting starts. You best make yourself small. You didn't have to be like this, brother. We're supposed to stick together.
Very cool. That's like a real movie, Jenny. I mean, hey. it's got like sound design and, and graphics and guns and extras. And I felt yeah, like I was watching Glory was... there for a minute uh, <laughs> awesome. with all the people. It's funny. It came out the same year as Revenant. Or we shot it oh, the same it did? year Revenant okay. came out. So like it was really funny because we had just wrapped our first half of shooting when Revenant came out and we watched Revenant. And it is very similar to some of the stunts we pulled off in the story. It and, is, you okay. Know, Western in the snow. So That was yeah. a tough one to get through, man. Rev- I mean, I love Leonardo DiCaprio. It, and once, in, once Upon a Time in Hollywood was pretty awful. Oh I mean, I've, What? Oh, my I God. I loved it. Did you really? Well, you loved Brad Pitt on the roof with his shirt off. <laughs> <laughs> I I really enjoyed it because it was not something actually this is terrible I shouldn't say it. it wasn't something that made me think and it was like exactly what I needed for a night out at the movies was yeah. just to turn my brain off and it, that some story's stuff just go. been done so many times before and I loved having the two of them together Pitt and DiCaprio but mm-hmm. until the fight scene with Pitt at the end there wasn't it wasn't very Tarantino-ish and I thought a lot of crazy stuff was going to happen at that cult place that was like Manson's compound or something mm-hmm. uh, but nothing happened it was like he went in the room and the lady was watching TV and I was like See ya. Bye. Uh, yeah, it was very strange. Usually some weird Pulp Fiction stuff happens in the middle of those movies, and it didn't. Not that it has to be weird, but anyway. Yeah, he did I was hold just it off like, till the end. And the music, come on. All right, so tell me about the music. The music on, was not great in that movie, was it? Uh, wait, you're talking about uh, uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Honestly, don't remember. Yeah, so it's not probably anything not that then. like I remember watching several of his films. Like, wow, what is this music? This is amazing, and listening to the soundtrack and even the Kill Bills a little bit. But uh, yeah, I mean, I probably hold him to a higher standard. But yeah, if I ever see him, I'll let him know that you think that. Yeah, so, you don't know. tell him because I <laughs> like him too much. I revere him too much. Okay, so. This is podcast. Let's talk about podcasts. I love talking about podcasting. I actually had a couple weeks where I just interviewed podcasters because I wanted to pick their brains and see, you know, their equipment, how they got started and how they promote and all this fun stuff. So let's talk about your podcast. Do you want to talk about Hollywood and scripted? And yeah. Okay. <laughs> Hold on one second. So I ha- I have your photos that promote it. Because are you going to oh, yeah. say that you're going to be hosting it or? Yeah. So I guess this is like an unofficial announcement okay. since we haven't made the official announcement. But yes, I am the host. And so we'll be starting season two technically mm-hmm. um, uh, in October. And it'll be we're going to update the format a little bit and, you know, change out some music and some artwork and all of that stuff. But it it is. Hollywood Unscripted is now hosted by Jenny Curtis. So very cool. Congratulations. That's <laughs> very you. cool. I'm so excited that there's a podcast that's similar to mine and it's in, and it's much better and it's gonna be out there. <laughs> I, I I would say that all of us just make the space a better place to be in for everybody. Yes, so. that's true. I'm just kidding. I'm totally kidding. <laughs> but um I think all the photos are great. Who took these photos? Let's put up one. This is my favorite one. I like the I like the mic and the leather jacket. That's a great yeah. picture. Uh, these are by, <laughs> talk about a family business. These are by a photographer named Chelsea Curtis. She are you is serious? This is your sister? sister. She's yeah. a professional photographer. She is. Yeah, she's a badass. Um, I mean, that's a beautiful photo. Can you see which one it is? There's a delay, but it's the one with the lights behind you and the I can beige see them jacket. in the reflection of your glasses. Oh, my God. Isn't that <laughs> hilarious? Okay. You're not going to be able to see the photo, but just look in my glasses and you'll be able to see which one it is. Uh, yeah, this was a really fun shoot. I I, uh, I have to say, as even as an actor, um, shoots photo shoots make me uncomfortable, but I had a really incredible group of people who helped me feel good about myself. And we took some promo shots. And now hopefully everyone will listen to our podcast. Photos. Yes, I think just because of the photos... Yes. They'll yeah. be listen- But why? <laughs> yeah, I guess I hate photos too. I, I, I'm, I'm not a big, you know. Well, it's, it's weird because we're not, me- like, we're not models. We're meant to be, like, having a camera 
acting is completely different because I can forget it's there and I don't have to really engage with it. I'm engaging with something else. And as a photo, you're like, okay, I'm going to twist my body in nine directions so that this looks interesting for the camera. Right. And it's a experience. And was it by <laughs> chance like this? that you got these photos or, or did your sister tell you what to do or what angle? Oh, she told me. Yeah. No, I had people just, I am, I am not, I am not a model. <laughs> they had to coach me through it for sure. Okay. Um, so, um, you, I mean, you could be in movies. You do not have a face for radio. Like you could be, yeah, I, I mean, honestly, I could, <laughs> I have a face for radio, <laughs> So I'm totally fine with being on the on the podcast, but um, it's cool that you want to do these podcasts. So tell me about all of them. You said you had this one project that you loved doing because you had to create, but just tell me about everything and I'll throw in some two cents here and there. Yeah. Uh, well, let's start with Hollywood Unscripted since that's where we were. Um, Hollywood Unscripted, so like you said, interviews with people in the industry and it has... Uh, you know, I don't think of it as like a voice for radio because, it, again, it's not about me. I just have the opportunity to sit down with people who are doing the things that I want to do and pick their brain. And it is just amazing. And uh, for the first season, we had a different host um, and he, you know, he would be talking to people and I was the producer and I would be sitting in the corner, usually tried the fact that I was crying at everything they were saying because it's just so exciting to hear people's personal stories about an industry that is the good side of the industry that is so passionate and and caring and creative and I I think that uh getting to have a show that we just get to explore that is the most exciting thing um so it, I don't know I don't know I, I love it a lot yeah I mean it's it's so cool because I never run out of questions and I'm always like, okay, I'm only going to take an hour of your time. We should go. Uh, because I'm so interested in what, in what these people are doing. Even yesterday I had this stylist Ann Madden who lives in Malibu mm -hmm. and, uh, I thought she might know Mike, but she doesn't, uh, Mike Thomas, the director that we both know, uh, producer, but, um, she was so fascinating because, um, she worked with Owen Wilson on this Campari ad that they shot in Mexico City. And I want to go to Mexico City. And she was like, oh, you have to see my friend Herme when you go to Mexico City. It's amazing. And they have this neighborhood, Roma. And, and then she was talking about how Owen was so gracious and nice to everyone. And then she did these Lamborghini ads and these ads for this Japan block in Japan. It was just fascinating. And she was sitting on this golf course in Palm Desert, which is right next to Palm Springs. And, and she had on like these old movie star glasses. Anybody could check it out. It was yesterday. And I just couldn't. She grew up in Europe and Luxembourg and Brussels and Belgium. And, and she had these stories and it was just fascinating. So, so I just love it. And, and when people yeah. do any kind of acting or directing or writing, I'm right there and in it. It's the people who do stuff that I've never done, like like stylist or art director and I'm kind of figuring it out, but I'm, I'm kind of learning too at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and that's, it's about being curious, right? It, yeah. It's, I, and I think I get originally, I was kind of nervous to talk to people who I knew were way outside of my realm of understanding mm. things. Um, and then I had to realize like, no, it's okay if the world, you know, hears me not knowing what I'm talking about because it's not possible to know everything. Right. Uh, and it's been, if you're just curious about another person and, and getting the opportunity to, I guess, not look in their face since I'm looking at a screen right now, but but engage with them about what they love most. And if that's costume design, and I know nothing about costume design, I it's still an amazing conversation because it's more about the passion underneath than the task itself. Right. And, and there was, a, it totally makes sense. And there was this, um, producer I worked with for 10 years, a video editor by trade. And uh, we were in edit room for 10 years together. And I didn't know anything really. I mean, I knew he had a wife and two kids and 
a dog, but I didn't really know the story. And taking an hour with someone, sitting down for an hour with someone and really finding out about their career from beginning to end and the advice that they have, you just hear these stories and you're just like, dude, I had no idea you did all this stuff. You traveled the world and you worked at all these companies and you worked on these movies. And um, so it's, it's just fascinating. I, I don't know. There's something about the conversations that are awesome. Yeah. Well, and they're unexpected, too, of like, I think a lot of like the when you start an interview show, it's like, OK, let me browse their IMDb and I can mm. ask them these bullet points. Right. And that's what I get. And that's what we all do. Right. Uh, but it it paints a different story than the person is. And getting into an interview and realizing that is the most exciting thing. Like I did an interview with Bruce Miller, who is the showrunner for Handmaid's Tale. And he has an extensive resume. And so I, you know, started asking him, I was like, but it looked didn't stay very long at any of these shows. Like, what was that about? Were you trying to find your place? And he was like, no, I, I just got fired a lot. And, <laughs> <laughs> and suddenly it became a real conversation about like, what the struggle is in finding what's actually right for you. Because once he landed like Handmaid's Tale, which he had said he had been preparing for for 30 years of his life because he loved the book so much. Like it, it talking to someone finds something that you could not learn from any website or any mm -hmm. article. Mm -hmm. You have to look in their eyes and, and have a conversation. And I, and I feel like podcasting does it better, Jenny, because like when you're on Conan and Jimmy Kimmel, they're like, okay, we're going to talk about this, this, tell a story about how your dog, you know, peed in the restaurant and then we're going to go to your clip. And it's very structured and there's, you know, don't talk about my ex-wife or don't talk about my ex-boy. Yeah. And, and this is just, you're like, we're meandering. We're, we're just going places depending on what you say. I'm going to go somewhere else. Yeah. And it's, it, it's organic. Yeah. So. Man, the, we do cool stuff. <laughs> yeah. So, um. What was I going to say? Was, tell me about the other stuff, the other podcasts. But everybody check out Hollywood Unscripted on when? On Kurt Co. Media? It comes out every Monday. It's on all of the platforms. Uh, pick your favorites on Apple, uh, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, Pandora, Google Play. Right. Podbean. But when, when are you relaunching? When is that? Oh, we're still going. Oh, so that's the – what's well, question? not questionable about it, but like – why it's kind of a funny relaunch. We're still going. I have an episode coming out on the 14th. Okay. We, we're skipping one for Labor Day. But like, while while we've been in this tr transition period between our, our previous host and myself, we've done a series of specials. And the specials have quickly become weekly. So it's basically like we're back in You're back. the show. Okay. Um, but the relaunch is really kind of introducing a slightly different format. Uh, the show used to be... Uh, much more. I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to say this because it's still my show. So I, I love the show no matter what. Mm. But it was much uh, more structured. Stricter. It was it was more calm. I'm going to be more energetic and weird and myself. Right. And so we're going to make the show a little bit more energetic and weird and myself. There will prob probably be you know, some fun segments and, and different music and different artwork. And so it's, it's just a little bit of a different feel from, from our previous guy. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, so tell yeah. me about the other podcasts. So the other podcasts, if I want to dip back into a moment of your time, as I already said, those are bite sized segments that um, they're contributed by people all over the world. Every day, Monday through Friday is a new episode. Uh, an entire episode is just that person's creative expression piece. What's the so name of this podcast? Sorry. A Moment of Your Time. Oh, um, okay. And it is, on again, on every platform. It We've had people who contribute songs and stories. And we had a sketch once. We have uh, personal statements, letters written to other people, letters written to themselves. So it's really a space of like, if someone hands you five minutes and says, do what you need with this, what would you do? And the only real stipulation we have is the time frame needs to be between one and five-ish minutes. We're pretty lax on the five. It goes up to about seven. And we want there to be an underlying theme of solidarity or hope. And 
that is a very loose guideline right. because pretty much anything can be about that if if you if view you it through that to. lens. Right, right, right. Yeah. Um, so it's been a really interesting show because I've connected with people who I have no I have no reason to connect with someone in uh, Australia but I have from this piece and all over the world people have contributed and it's been a really uh, just heartwarming experience for me because it it makes me not feel very alone but also I've heard a lot that people feel they feel supported by being able to have their voice heard and so it's a really cool experience um, and I highly recommend everybody submit a piece not only listen right and if you want to submit you can email moment of your time podcast at gmail.com and we can chat yes very cool i like that idea i want to listen to that i'm just uh going full screen to you because i, I want to move my monitor back a little bit i think i'm on top of it there we go um so <laughs> so the other two podcast and that one you produce and host also the so moment that of time? one that one I just produced. It doesn't have a host okay. because it's not about me. It's about right. The it's about submitter. the submissions. So, for people. yeah, my voice is only on it if we get a submission from someone who doesn't want to read their own piece. If they're uncomfortable with okay. their voice, I've had a few people say, "Here's my piece. Would you read it for me?" And in that case, like, yeah, I want your work out there, and and I'm happy to read for you. Um, so that's that show. Right. Um, our improv show which i was telling you about before we have a show called when last i left and that is just chaos in a jar and <laughs> it is <laughs> uh we basically created a long form format of storytelling the premise was that one of my co-hosts chris always does some kind of social faux pas and then we the four of us hosts, Chris Porter, uh, Quilly E. Whitman, Mickey Shalowa, and myself, uh, basically tell the story of what happened to us after Chris creates this faux pas. The, uh, I guess, roadblocks that we have to jump are submitted, listener submitted midpoints to the story and end points to the story. Oh, So okay. we open those while we're telling the story. We, we basically... Chris says his social faux pas, we get to open the midpoint of the story envelope and see what, what we're going to kind of lead to. Once right. we get to the midpoint, then we get to open the endpoint envelope, see what we're going to lead to. Um, all of this is while basically pl not playing a drinking game, but like drinking game rules where once, have you, I, well, I won't ask you if you play drinking games, but you know <laughs> when like you're playing something and there's some silly rule that you shouldn't break. Like, uh, you can't say blue and if right. you say blue, you have to drink. Right. So we basically applied that kind of thing to this storytelling where every week there was a new rule. Like you cannot say a number or you have to whatever. Right. And, uh, if you break the rule, you have to introduce a goat into the story. So our uh, <laughs> mascot for When Last I Left is Yoinkie the Goat. Okay. And we would have hundreds of goats in these stories. Basically, all of this is a long-winded way of saying it is a just chaotic end-of-the-world mess every week. And it is a lot of fun. Um, but we did put kind of a pause on it while we're in quarantine because it yeah, was... Yeah, it's hard to do that. Well, you could do yeah. it. You could do it. But um, let me ask you this question because I interview a bunch of comedians um they said there's a tight energy and and i was like what are you guys talking about tight energy and it's that when you go to a comedy club and there's 200 seats if you take 50 people and spread them out throughout the 200 seats it's a it's less of an energy than if the place is packed and mm -hmm. everybody's arm to arm which i've definitely seen when i've performed for theater uh you know a packed house has a lot more energy than two people um, so, yeah. so it's kind of hard, like you can do, and I've heard that about these virtual comedy shows that they're doing, like, yeah, you can put in canned laughter. Yeah. You can do it on zoom, but it's not the same. Not the same. Yeah. yeah you don't have it's the, the energy of being there. Yeah. Well, and that's how I feel about not to segue completely, but like Dodgers or all of baseball, if you're watching baseball on TV and they have piped in this fake crowd sound, yeah. it's so weird. It's not working for me. NBA, 
I worked for the NBA for years and, and um, had to watch it just because it made my job easier and baseball, uh, MLB. But uh, now I don't watch it so much because I'm not working there anymore. But uh, yeah, it, even trying to watch, I like playoffs. I like championships. I like Olympics where it's do or die. And uh, yeah. I'm just like, what? And even the NBA has these like video screens now with like, video people and i'm like oh that's just all it's like a pickup game it has no energy Mm -hmm. yeah it's not working so that's why i don't do stand-up comedy online or anywhere (laughs) um (laughs) but yeah so when last i left is on pause because of that we are eventually going to introduce a spinoff of when last i left because for a while we were doing what we were calling quarantine games and they were games that we could play over zoom um but as you said i'm very busy and so we kind of pushed off the launch of a new improv show for a little bit. And that hopefully will happen later this fall uh, when I can catch my breath. And right. Yeah. And what is I like, sorry, what is the last podcast? Um, the last podcast is a podcast called solar. It is not currently in, uh, it's not currently out. It's in production. And it is a narrative podcast that is just the coolest thing. It's it's a really great story. It, it's uh, set in space, and I don't know how much I can say about it, so I won't say too much. But I can say that Chris Porter, who is one of my hosts on When Last I Left, uh, wrote it. And he is also the writer of, um, or one of the members of my immersive company, which I think I had mentioned to you off of this call before, but if I didn't, I'm sorry. I'm a member of an immersive theater company. And so we basically have a, a podcast that's written from this person who it's all it's all poetry and deep and dark and action filled and it's theater for your ears. And I'm so excited to get it out there. That's very cool because I interviewed your friends, Shane yeah. and Bill from Carcerum, which is like an audio play. So would you say it's kind of like an, uh, they're calling it an audio series. Is it kind of like a narrative audio series, this solar? Yes. Okay. Yes. So it's a story and that's, I'm kind of working on an idea for a true crime podcast right now. And that's the same thing. It's a story. It's like doing a feature for TV where you have to add music and, and you're having to cut in different interviews and news clips and it's like putting together a story so yeah it's like a tv series you're just not watching it yeah um exactly but But i have to ask you about your theater company because this is so weird that we're we're doing similar things i had a theater company in san francisco called arena interplay and the reason why we called it that is because i think we're using different words but yours is immersive mine was interactive in the sense that we had the the audience in we were surrounding the audience and going through the audience so the audience was interacting with us they weren't sitting off to one side with yeah. the fourth wall is that is that what you're saying is that your audience is kind it's of it's like that but on crack is what i'll say really <laughs> so like, okay the best way i can explain it is like you as an audience member in immersive theater you are part of the show you are not there to watch okay um so Uh, The best example I can give is my all-time favorite piece of art I've ever had the uh, gift of being a part of was a show that I did with my company, Speakeasy Society. And it uh, it was called The Johnny... It was based on Dalton Trumbo's Johnny Got His Gun, which is a World War I book. If you've never read it, it's absolutely horrifying, but also I recommend it because it's a real work of art. And the entire book takes place in the mind of a soldier who has been hit by a bomb. So he is in a hospital somewhere where he doesn't know where he is. He doesn't speak the language, but also he can't hear, he can't see, he can't feel his entire body. Like everything's been blown off. He is just consciousness. And so we took that and we put it up as a show and we placed it in a mausoleum. uh, So the audience was the character of Johnny and the entire show was Johnny's memories. And so if you're Johnny, mm-hmm. the entire show is you. Like, you have to engage. So we're, you know, running from floor to floor and room to room and creating these scenes for you and talking directly to you. And you have 
the ability ability to affect the story because when I ask you a question and you answer, I have to react to whatever it is you're saying and hopefully you're not going to be rude and try and throw things off. But but it's right. it's just sitting and watching and maybe responding to something. The audience really is the story. And um so yeah, it's that on crack is really that is that on crack. Yeah. Um that's amazing because that's kind of my my dream and what I found out when I was doing theater is that people and and I'm I'm curious to see what happened during your shows. People were reluctant to be immersive and inside uh, the space. There was this very famous theater company in Spain called like Pino de las Moas or something, and they they had um, it was like they were in a gymnasium, but they were at war, and they put the audience in the middle of the gymnasium and bombs were overhead and people were falling from the sky from helicopters and they had to get out of the way people were shooting and and you know you have to have all these warnings like you can have a heart attack if you come in here because of the lights and the gunshots and all this but everything was figurative it wasn't a real gun it was like someone holding a gun Mm -hmm. but still um do you have that situation where people aren't as are they reluctant in some way or was everybody ready to be part of it I mean, at least for the immersive community uh, who have come to our shows, I mean, people know what they're in for, but we also do, you make it very clear up front, you are going to be touched, you are going to be spoken to, like, please, uh, you know, you find creative ways of giving the audience the information of like, please do what's asked of you so that you don't ruin the show and please don't, whatever. Right. Um, but usually audience members are there to play. What I what I think is really interesting, though, and in what it's been for me is such an a interrogation of human uh, experience. I, I don't really know how to explain it other mm-hmm. than it's it's really interesting to watch how someone takes in what you're doing. And so when I'm having a conversation as a character with you you kind of have to have a conversation back. Right. And it's always kind of weird if someone's not really into it or you feel like they don't want to be there. But I remember really clearly there was, uh, I had a monologue at the end that was just this rip my soul out and throw it out the window kind of monologue. And there was a woman who was literally facing the other way from me, like completely turned around oh, okay. back to me. Okay. And, I was, and it was like, that's really bizarre. Like, I mean, come on, I'm like leaving it all out here for you and you won't even look at me. And then at one point she shifted and I could see that she was crying. And it made me realize like, I have no idea what's going on in someone else's head. Like, I don't know how someone takes in art and the fact that I'm watching you watch me or not watch me doesn't mean I know how you are experiencing the work. And that was a huge lesson for me to learn. Um, through immersive which i love it's, and i can't wait to get back to it's so cool i would love to see it uh do you ever record it on video or anything like that um we have some video like clips but it's really hard it's not to the same. record it it's not the same and it's not for at least for like a show like that there were you know 30 different experiences someone could have if they come in because there's so much going on right. and so many tracks that you could have been put on and it's kind of impossible to give that experience to a camera. Um, right. No, I get it. I totally get it. Yeah. Uh, it sounds very cool, though. And I love that you call it art. Like, I, I saw an interview the other day where someone was talking about um, films and how it was art. And that some people look at art differently. Like, the, I don't know if you have heard this, but Christopher Nolan's new movie, Tenant, is supposedly so loud, the sound effects and the music is so loud that you can't hear the dialogue. And people yeah. are just totally freaking out because they're like, I can't understand what they're saying. And it's a very complicated plot. There's time travel and things are moving forward and reverse and cars are running in reverse. So people are just completely confused. But the idea is like, oh, well, maybe you'll go back seven times to understand what's happening. And which is kind of ridiculous. But I know you have stuff to do. You're the busiest woman in, in L.A. <laughs> but let's can we wrap it up with advice that you would have for people who want to be a podcaster, producer, or an actress? Whatever you want to say. Yes. 
uh, advice. Um, I want to figure out how to say this, but I think my, my main advice would be to do what you love, but not only that, like you have to love what you do in order to do this. And sometimes I think that's a choice. So like for me as an actor, I could just as easily look at myself podcasting and be like, ah, this wasn't the path I wanted to take. What am I doing here? And suddenly make it unhappy for myself. And what is the point if we're anything or do anything uh, if, if we're not enjoying it? So I think it's not only follow the path and make sure you, you are doing what you love, but once you land somewhere, if it's unexpected, choose to love what you do because if you can't make yourself love it there's no there's really no point really don't get into this if you're not going to love what you're doing (laughs) yeah (laughs) it's a lot of work and it's funny because it doesn't seem like it's a lot of work but it is but um i'm also a workaholic i don't know if you could pick that up yeah no i didn't pick that up at all but no (laughs) I, i had the conversation with mike thomas who we both know about how when you love what you do, it's kind of like robbing the bank because you would yeah. stay there all night or you would come in early because you can't wait to get back to it. I mean, you have to go home yeah. to your loved ones or whatever, and you have to go feed the dog and and to sleep a little bit, even if it's a few hours, but you just can't wait to get back. Or, or you're getting up at five in the morning and writing notes because you're so excited about what you're doing. And that's the best thing in life. If you can do that. Yeah. Then you've got it all figured out. Yeah. And that that's the way to go. Love love it. Love what you yeah, do. Yeah, love what you do. <laughs> all right, Jenny, you uh have things to do. This has been great. Thank you so much for doing Fun. this. And Thank you. Uh, I am going to listen to a bunch of your podcasts and I will Please do. I definitely if I'm ever out in LA, I'm going to come see that immersive theater cuz that you do a lot of cool stuff, but that sounds really really cool. Uh, it's really cool. So we got to get rid of coronavirus so we can go back in and touch people's faces again. Yes. You know? Yes. Get back to the theater. <laughs> oh, my God. There's so many things that aren't happening right now, like comedy and theater. Films are happening a little bit. But, oh, my God, we just need to fix this thing and, and get back to making stuff. All right. Thank you so much. You have a great day. You, this Sean. was awesome and fun. And uh, <laughs> we'll talk soon. Okay. All right. Thanks, Bye. Jenny. Bye.